How is it going everybody? You're watching that about tech and Apple has just released iOS 26 beta 5 and in this video I'm gonna tell you what you actually need to know and why I'm getting excited about it. Let's get started. So let's start off with the size of the software update. As you can see right here, iOS 26 beta 5, 10.73 gigabytes, almost 11 gigabytes. Please keep in mind this is an iPhone 16 Pro Max and I was coming from iOS 26 developer beta 4, so just the previous version. This may vary a little bit, but it already tells you how big of a software update this is. One of the first things you get after updating to beta 5 is this notification right here, talking about adaptive power. So iPhone is adjusting performance to help extend your battery life. And if you're not really familiar with this, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you open up your settings and then you go to battery and then let it load just to make it easier. And if we scroll down until we get here to power mode, as you can see, we have adaptive power. This is not new, okay? But the notification letting you know that is new and if you don't know what adaptive power really is as you can see right here is when your battery usage is higher than usual so when your iphone detects that your battery is going down a little bit faster than usual it'll change and tweak a few things here and there to help make your battery last longer ideally till the end of the day and in order to do that it'll actually just make small adjustments to performance and disable a few things here and there. And it'll even sometimes disable completely your always on display and even enable low power mode automatically. So think of it as AI, even though it's not properly Apple intelligence, but think of it as AI when we're talking about our battery. So having this on, adaptive power on, would just make sure your iPhone is constantly monitoring your battery, your battery usage, and try and help you get the maximum, the most out of your battery. Now let's talk about some design changes. They're not huge, but they're pretty cool. So if you take a look here at the dock, you probably notice that it's slightly larger. So it's just slightly taller than before in iOS 26 beta 4. On top of that, we have a ton of new stuff regarding liquid glass. Like for example, if you enter jiggly mode, as you can see right here, the minus little icons, they're actually liquid glass. Before, they were a little bit more opaque, a little bit more, a little less translucent, if you ask me, and now they're a little bit more transparent. So uh, you just notice that throughout the whole operating system, liquid glass is just getting better, more consistent, looking better, looking way more refined. Something that's also new is this new bouncy effect that we have throughout the whole operating system. So let me show you. If I lock my iPhone, as you can see, and then if I go ahead and unlock it without Face ID, as you can see right here, it'll take a second. And then as you can see, you probably notice this bouncy effect right here at the bottom. Look at eight, nine, and zero. So let me show you once again. So I'm gonna swipe up, wait a second, and then you're gonna see right here, you get this bouncy effect when the passcode numbers actually show up. And this is not exclusive to the lock screen. Uh, this is everywhere. So for example, if I go ahead and pull down right here on my control center, you definitely see the bouncy effect as well. So take a look at this. So once uh, the icons, once every single toggle actually uh, stays in place, it'll actually expand a little bit and jiggle a little bit. So take a look at this. They're jiggling a little bit. Again here, once it stays in the middle, it'll jiggle a little bit. So it's gonna give this natural effect as if we're actually touching on those little circles and those little buttons. So it's trying to give us more of this realistic thing as if iOS is a physical object, not only a software. It's giving like a texture, it's giving real life to the OS. And as I said, it's not just here. So for example, if I open up Safari and I'm on this page, as you can see, if I actually come back, take a look at the bouncy effect as well. So I'm going forwards, bouncy, going backwards, bouncy. If I tap somewhere right here, and let's do it once again so you guys can have an idea. So everywhere I'm moving, going backwards and forwards, especially if I'm going a little bit faster, it's gonna give this bouncy effect. So 
Apple is really good at this, like scrolling and natural motion and all that. And it's actually going to the next level with iOS 26. And I think it looks very natural. It feels very natural and polished. Another thing that's new is if you pull down in the control center and then you tap and hold on your connectivity controls and then tap and hold once again on Wi-Fi, as you can see right here, every single Wi-Fi network that actually is password locked, pretty much every password apart from like uh, public ones, uh, will actually show up this little padlock right here, just letting you know that it has a password lock on it. If we go ahead and open up the camera app, you have probably seen the new control right here at the bottom, and some people didn't really like the way it actually worked. So by swiping left and right, some people prefer it inverted. So now Apple gave us this possibility. So if you go ahead and open up the settings and let's come back and back once again, and then let's actually go ahead and go to camera and then scroll all the way down is gonna be the latest option. So it's gonna be classic mode switching. So if, we, if you enable it and then you come back here to the camera app, as you can see right here, it's now the opposite. So if I go left, it'll go right. If I go right, it'll go left. So think of it like if you were a Mac user back in the day when we had natural scrolling. Remember that? Like in the trackpad and on the mouse, it's the exact same thing. So it's giving you the possibility uh, to have it natural or inverted. Uh, in my opinion, it's just a matter of getting used to it. It's just a cool thing to have the possibility of choosing. We also have some new icons. So if you go ahead and take a look at iTunes Store, it's new. Uh, as you probably remember, it was a typical store and now it has those little effects on the tips. Uh, the games app is a little bit different as well. As you can see, it's more, it has more of a shade to it. And we have a new airdrop icon as well. So let's say I wanna share something. So I have this photo, I wanna share it. As you can see, airdrop has a new icon. It's more blue now before it used to be whiter. So just new icons and Apple is constantly doing this changing and trying and waiting for feedback and then uh, when they're done they actually decide what they're going to do with it not necessarily those are going to be the final icons maybe they will maybe they won't i don't know if you use the mail app but if you do like myself uh now we have a new button which is so important so you have here uh all your threads and all your mail now we have the select button once again which was gone before in iOS 26 beta 4. So you tap on select and you can select multiple emails and do whatever you want. Before you would need to tap on the three dots and then select was actually right here. So of course having select always there kills a step and of course is always the best bet. Another thing that's new is this new notification on the dynamic island once your battery reaches 20% and 10% as well. So as you can see, it's completely new. I think it looks really good and it looks more preeminent. You definitely see it and it's very important that you see it. And as you tap on it, it'll automatically enable low power mode. So it just looks better, new design. I like this implementation. And last but not least on the new stuff, if you actually go to your messages settings and then scroll quite a bit, because this is a huge page, and you go to RCS messaging, right now RCS is enabled, is actually available on more and more countries. Like for example, here in Brazil, before you just weren't able to enable RCS messaging, now you are, as a matter of fact, I did, and it's totally working. But of course, in order to start using RCS messaging, the other person you're talking to has to have this feature enabled as well. And since iOS 26 is still on beta, not everyone is really uh, uh, running and of course they just can't do it with you and that's why I just can't demonstrate it. But you probably know that RCS messaging is like having iMessage or WhatsApp, for example, but with your SMS. So it's like SMS, like 2.0, like new generation of SMS. So you're able to actually send audio messages, emoji, photos and videos through Wi-Fi uh, instead of using your typical SMS protocol, right? But of course, as you probably know, when you're using RCS, even though you're able to do pretty much everything you do on iMessage, it doesn't get blue bubbles. It's still green bubbles. So uh, you can talk to an Android user as if you're using iMessage, but you'll know they're not using an iPhone. 
And last but not least, I want to talk about performance, battery, and of course, my overall opinion about this software update. So let's talk about performance. These are the numbers, the data that I got running a Geekbench while in iOS 26 beta 4. So this was yesterday. As you can see, 2646, 2746, 7439, right? Single core and multi-core. And this is the test like half an hour later when I was already in iOS 26 beta 5. As you can see, we're getting pretty much the same result on single core. Like it was like uh, pretty much the same thing, like 14 points lower, that's nothing. But take a look at multi-core from 7,439 to 8,231. This is a huge, massive difference. And of course, this is, these are just raw numbers, not necessarily means that the iPhone is getting like 20% faster or anything like that. But if you ask me, iOS 26 beta 5 is finally the first version that I'm actually okay using. I'm not saying you should update right now to a beta version. I'm just saying it just feels stable. It just feels like a proper version. It's not glitchy, it's not full of issues and hiccups here and there. Uh, I haven't seen any bugs and it's just so smooth, so fluid. Every single thing, like the little details that before in beta 4, you could definitely tell you were in a beta version. Right now, it almost feels like an official stable version. So this, this is actually impressive. When you're talking about performance and stability and smoothness, it's incredible. And with the new uh, updates to design, like I mentioned before throughout this video, it just really feels like a good software update. And of course, we have to talk about battery as well when we're talking about a software update. So if we open up our settings once again, but this time we actually come back all the way, all the way, this is so hidden. So if I go to battery and then let it load, as you probably know, uh, and if I actually go to my battery usage, still like less than 24 hours is not enough for me to give you a full opinion on the battery but I can definitely tell that just on today, so as you can see, Wednesday, that's today, 33% uh, of usage, and I'm getting three hours and a half of screen on time. That's really good. So it's getting closer if we project it, right? It's getting closer to 10 hours of uh, screen on time, which is incredible. If we actually take a look here, for example, at last Friday, I got 100% of battery usage in nine hours. So it's getting better than beta four. It's getting an amazing number if you ask me. Over nine hours was already great, like the previous version now, getting closer to 10 hours projected. It's incredible. So battery life is just so good. It's just amazing. So if you ask me what I think about iOS 26 beta five, uh, the one thing I have to tell you is, if you are already in the beta program, update now. It's an amazing software update if you are already there, if you are already running iOS 26. But of course, if you're still in iOS 18, like most people, like wait, like you shouldn't do it right now if you ask me. We are just a few weeks away from the official release, so there's no point updating right now. There are still bugs, there are still problems, there are still app compatibility issues, the usual, the normal, you already know that all, always happens every single year. But uh, what I can definitely tell you after using this for pretty much a day, like pretty much 24 hours is, this is really good. I really like the way iOS 26 is going. Unlike iOS 18, which was just the exact same thing as iOS 17, but with Apple intelligence that completely failed and no one used, iOS 26 is actually focusing on what we care about. So it's focusing on design, smoothness, it's focusing on like feeling special, it's making it look new and fresh, and the ecosystem is really working really well. So I think Apple really headed to the right direction when they decided to make iOS 26 like an improved version of iOS and just forget a little bit about Apple intelligence and focus on what they're good. Of course, it's not perfect. Of course, it has issues and problems. But if you ask me, iOS 26 is just a joy to use. Every single time I'm navigating on my iPhone, opening up apps, especially the native apps, and I see new buttons, new interfaces, something new, it's always a little surprise. Unlike iOS 18, as I said, which was just pretty much exactly the same we're used to, 
with a big feature that no one really cared. So I really like the way Apple in iOS 26 is heading. And this is pretty much my opinion and my overview of iOS 26 beta 5. I'll see you on the next video on beta 6. See you later, guys.